Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the Microsoft Dataverse support for Power BI. So finally, it is out. It is now out in GA mode, which means you can start going ahead and integrating with it and doing all kinds of fun uh, reports with the Microsoft Dataverse over there. And I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing of how you can find that integration piece and how you can go ahead and bring it into Power BI and where exactly do you find it in Dataverse. I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing, but first, here's my intro. So the big thing in the Microsoft Dataverse support for Power BI is that it has Power BI Direct Query. Did you hear what I just said? It has Power BI Direct Query, which means it can directly connect and query the data from Dataverse in Power BI. I mean, that's real-time data that it'll go ahead and pick up over there. That's, that's huge. That's why I want to actually show this to you because now it is, it's in general availability. So you can actually start you know, going ahead and working with it. Now, in this um, the screenshot that I put over here, plus that link, which I'll go and put in the description, uh, key things is that I'll be focusing on the Power BI Direct Query feature, uh, but there is also the Power BI and the TDS, which is also tabular data stream, and that gives you the flexibility to also go ahead and connect with SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. Um, there is a little change that you have to make on the back end side, but I'll, I'll you know worry about that. I'll show you that in the next video. Today, it's all about doing the uh, Direct Query for Power BI. So here's all that big description but let's jump in because I want to show you a few things. I want to show you first from the team side, how you go ahead and you know, look at the tables and make the connection and then how you go ahead and even look at it from the Power App side. And then finally in Power BI, how you go ahead and get that data in. So let's jump in and I'm going to go into my teams. So my teams over here is pretty straightforward. You know, I must shown this in a whole bunch of day, uh, videos, but today I want to focus on the Power Apps Champions team. Now over here, I've got a few things going on as far as the Dataverse goes. So let's go take a look at it. I'm gonna click on Power Apps. And in Power Apps, once I'm here, I'll go into Build. And in Build, selected for the Power Apps Champions. As you can see, Power Apps Champions. I've got a few things going on over here, but I want you to focus on the two tables. It says Live, Demo, and Report Table. So that's the ones I wanna focus on. So what we do is let's go and click on the See All. And on the see all, we're gonna go into the tables. And now that we are in tables, you see the analyze in Power BI. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and click on it. And if you don't even see anything download, automatically, because normally you see, if something's downloading, you just kind of see it drop over here, or you'll see something on your side. But on Teams, um, I haven't been able to see it, but what I did do was I can go ahead and look at it on my download side. So as you see, it just downloaded right now. And I can you know prove that to you from just the date timestamps. Uh, so it downloads this. PBIDS file. That's what it downloads. And because I have already the Power BI desktop, um, you know, the software installed, it automatically puts that Power BI file over there. So it kind of knows that, hey, this is going to be open from the desktop su support site. All right. So that's the first thing is now if I go ahead and click on it, it will go ahead and open that directly on my Power BI side. So let's do that. I clicked on it and it's opening up my uh, Power BI desktop. Um, while it's opening that, what, what I did was I went ahead and updated mine to the November 11th, uh, November 20, uh, uh, 21, um, and it's got a sweet look and feel to it. So my recommendation to you is at least go ahead and open up to as early as you can, or maybe stay a few months behind, but that's, that's basically what I wanted to show you over here. Now, it went ahead and directly opened it into it, but sometimes for you, it might ask for authentication. So your authentication, make sure it's the same one that you would log into for your Power App site, and you should all be golden over there, okay? So that's what it did. It went ahead and you know, grabbed the entire name, uh, which is pretty sweet, and it directly opened that into my Power BI over here. Now, I want you to try to remember that those two apps that we are looking for, and once again, uh, the tables, it's Live, Demo, and Report Table. What I like over here is that it even gives you the names of the tables that you're gonna look for. So it's something to do with the CRDD, and those are the prefixes. And I kind of wanted to show that to you is because sometimes you might just come and you know start uh, scrolling through to see the live demo um, or the report table, and you may not find it. The good thing about that is there's a search functionality. So if I come over here in the navigator, and if I just type in live, uh, it'll give me the live demo over here. 
And now I can go ahead and select that. And it even does the same thing which Power BI always has is it gives me a live, uh, you know, a overview of what it is, um, which is the data coming through, which again is not the importance of this. Um, but, you know, I can go ahead and even do the report one and I can go and grab that. So the report table, I'll load that. And I think over here, there was some data which I actually had demoed one time. Either way, I can go ahead and uh, connect to it. And it goes ahead and says, yeah, it's making the connection. So this is this is all simple and easy on the, the Power BI side. So it's, you know, definitely um, easy enough. But now you've made that connection. Remember, key, key thing, direct query connection. Huge. That is huge. Okay. And now I've gotten all the connections over here. But I, I did want to kind of show you some other slick things that are available. Now, by the way, if you look over here, this is this is neat because not only did it go ahead and get the table and the data that you want, but it pulls everything. So it pulls. If it is in your table, you know, besides the fact that you've added those um, the columns that you yourself add, um, it goes ahead and has all these other column types that it automatically goes and puts it in. Well, it goes and pulls everything in over here. So it's pretty neat because it's like a you know all um, information option uh, flexibility available over here. So I kind of really like that. So in addition to some of this data over here, if I go back and, you know, click over here, let me just try to go ahead and make another one of that connection. I'm going to cancel out from here. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to open that up. It'll try to open it up again in my Power BI. There's some interesting tables that it automatically goes and connects to it. But there's one table that you might actually find that very interesting. So I'm going to open that up. It's opening. What it does in the Power BI is it actually goes ahead and opens up in an entire you know, window altogether, actually an entire app connection really helps for that side. Okay, so we went ahead and connected over here, but the one that I want you to focus on is the one, uh, is this one over here, the one which says Canvas app. I found that very intriguing. So when I click on it, this is what it actually showed me, is that these were actually the apps that I had built. And let me scroll back over here to so get some names. See here, these were actually the apps that I had built. It's even got that side inspection one, the example that I did at the N365 conference. It goes ahead and gets these apps. It's able to kind of give you that back end list of all that information or table of all the information where it is storing that. But one thing that really caught my attention, besides, you know, it's giving me all the list over here, but I was just amazed and it tells me, um, the, the client version over here, the mini client version, like this is all the versions that was built, was created by this client version. So it's recording all those versions over here. So what I wanted to kind of show is that besides the fact that it has that file name, it's capturing some really neat metadata, which I know some of the Power Platform admins are gonna love this because it's recording all this information. And this is just one of the things that I wanted to show you is that besides the fact that you get those tables that you want, it comes with some really sweet metadata in the back end as well. So take a little bit of time viewing all of this, because if you want to build your own custom reports or you want to tweak that center of excellence, um, the data is already there. That's the sweet thing. The data is already there. And I wanted to kind of prove that to you by just showing this one little example. But as you can see, there's a whole bunch more tables over here. So I showed you this one way to go ahead and get that file directly from uh, Power BI, but there's actually a second way to do it. And I found that very intriguing. So I said, I'm going to share this with you all. So we did everything from the team side and we did everything from, you know, getting it from the Power BI, but there's actually a way I could do this even on the Power App side. So I'm here in the Power Apps and to do what I'm going to show you, you will have to be a Power Platform admin to do that. So kind of keep that in mind. So here I've logged into the Power Platform admin and now for me in my tenant, when I go up over here and look at the environments, this is what I see. If you notice, I don't see my two environments that are tied to the teams. I, I just don't see it over here. However, if I go to the top right on the settings gear, I click on the admin center, I do see them over there. So I know that they do show up on the admin side, uh, but I don't show the, see them over there. All right, in the initial uh, environment thing, please. So I come on the, uh, uh, and well, actually I see them over here. So now these were the four that I was seeing, but I do see the two teams environments as well. Now I want the, this is the Power Apps Champions one that we created the first way. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. Now, when I go and click on it, one of the interesting things that it does is right here, it gives me my environment ID. And so what happens is when I go and grab the environment ID, just go and grab that, just the environment ID. And what I've done is I've actually kept another tab open. 
So watch this. This is how the, the home one or the default environment looks like. But say if I switched over to my uh, developer one or the dev one, I see this URL. Now watch this. I got to go ahead and just take outside that, you know, forward slash. And it's important that you just um, change that uh, GUID or the environment ID, but you also keep that forward slash home because I'm going to show you something. All right. So I'm going to take the entire thing off here and I just put that GUID in. You click on it gives you this error. But if you go back, and if you type in that forward slash home, it actually takes you to that environment. And this is huge. I found this very interesting. I just think, let me just try it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> it worked. Now, I don't know how long this would last. Uh, maybe I, you know, people have a bunch of red flags up over there. But it still works in the suite because now I can actually see that, right? See, I don't see this one before. And I proved that to you. But now I can see it. So if I were to go back to the admin center and I pick on the other one, which is the uh, the one for um, family health, and I just click on the family health over here, and now I go grab this environment ID, just grab the GUID over here, come back here, let's try that same thing again. All right, even took out the home, click on that, gives me this error. But if I come in and actually type in the forward slash home, bam, it works. It takes me directly over here. And then now watch these things. I can actually click on the app and I can see the apps over here. In fact, the other one was a great example because I already had some apps. So let's go back over here to my Power Apps Champion. Show you that one more time. Grab that nice ID. Come back over here. Close it. And you can see this, you know, this, this forward slash, there was home, forward slash, there's apps. So there's there's different ways you can get it. In fact, if you just as long as you put something in, it works. Because before I was doing home, but we saw that apps too. So if I put this apps in, it directly comes away. So it's very URL sensitive for lack of a better term. But check this out now. I've got the direct access to the apps. I've got direct access now to the tables directly from the Power App side. As long as you know what those IDs are. And you will. If you power platform admin, you will. So here it is, you know, able to go ahead and see all those tables. Now, Things that I noticed over here was depending on what the app was, some of it will work over here, some will not, and it'll be very specific. So let me kind of grab an ID. I think I um, uh, there was the, the employee's ID one. I'm gonna pick a few of them. So the employee's ID one with its nice responsive design and everything works direct. Well, actually here, anyway, this is actually a good one. It says, oops, please try again. And it says app only support supported in Microsoft Teams. To open the app, please use the Microsoft Teams on your uh, phone or desktop. So this is very Teams-centric. It will not work on your browser over there. So this is what falls into the whole Teams data worst things. And there are apps like that. We just proved it. In addition, though, there were some other ones. Like I think I was the um, inspection one or, you know, the app, this was the inspection one. Some of these apps, they will work outside. So it kind of, you know, you, you want to you know, uh, check that out to see which does and doesn't work. Because it, it does. Some of them do work. And here's here's an example. Just make sure that how the app works, you know, is all good as far as permissions and everything. Um, and who's viewing it. Uh, we'll save that for another day. But here's it is, is that there's a combination. Some of them are very team-centric. And it will openly tell you that, hey, this will only work on the team side. But some of them, even though you've built it on Teams, they will still work over here. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, but be very cautious about that as well. Because I just proved that some may not work. So I know we covered a whole bunch of things, but just to give you a quick overview. First thing is this is Power BI Direct Query Connection. That was huge. If you haven't you know, remembered anything, if this is your big takeaway, that itself is huge. Second thing is I showed you how to go ahead and get that direct query connection from Teams. Remember, we went and looked at the tables itself. In the tables, we was able to get that file, and that makes the connection directly into Power BI over there. And then the, finally, from the Power App side, you can actually go ahead and now connect or look at the environments for those teams on the Power App Set. And I showed you that little trick, right? Because initially on the environments drop down, it wouldn't show me those environments for those teams. But if I went to the admin and if I clicked on the environment, I got that good, like the environment ID. And when I put the environment ID on the URL, I was able to access the environment over there through the Power App Set. I was able to look at the files, I mean, the apps over there, the tables. And I kind of pointed out that some of those apps will not work but it points out that, hey, this will only work in Teams, but the others will work over there. So these were all the things that I covered. Hopefully this was helpful to you. And as always, keep power apping.